We all have that one friend who constantly recommends us to watch a particular show. To me, that's my brother. Every single time we talk about TV shows, he tells me, you need to watch Breaking Bad. You are missing out. I wish I would lose my memory just to watch Breaking Bad again. And since I hate the feeling of missing out, I watched it. All five seasons of it. And it turns out, not a bad decision after all. Every single season was better than the previous one. Well, by the end of it, I kinda agreed it's in my top 5 now. You're goddamn right. And just as I thought I was safe, he started saying the same fucking shit about another series. You better watch Better Call Saul, he says. And he told me it's about that lawyer from Breaking Bad, the cool lawyer. And I'm like, I wondered, what would it even be about? As if I didn't watch a show about a chemistry teacher cooking meth with his student, my lazy ass kept on delaying and delaying and delaying till randomly scrolling through Netflix these days looking for something to watch. I noticed the director of Los Poyos Hermanos in the corner and I said to myself, oh wow, it is him, the Terminator, the only guy who stood up to Homelander and got to live. And so I found myself clicking and here I am making a video telling you what what I thought about it. I'll flex a little bit of my knowledge and share my experience with you. So get what? grounded as in subscribe and hit the like button. Cause trust me, bro. I make enjoyable content. Okay. So the first thing I noticed is this weird intro, which shows Jimmy working anxious, looking around, afraid of getting spotted. And it doesn't take too much brain for me to understand that the scene takes place after Jimmy bought the dust filter over max extract pressure pro metal 60 and burned his own pocket so hard that he started to work a nine to five job. He probably found it hard to get by. And that's why he was afraid that the guy who stood up would ask for a refund or make a complaint probably would get him fired this is showcased clearly as we see in the next few scenes he barely gets any good cases <laughs> Okay, before you think I'm actually this retarded, that was sarcasm. Okay, thank you. So I did go over the first episode and not gonna lie, the first half was slow and boring. My overstimulated ass kept checking his phone as it went by. I was just like most of you are, I have brain rot and slow shows are like a torture. I was waiting for Gustavo, or maybe the Salamanca, you know, the bad guys to show up. But instead, we we have the Shalom Manka. That was a Jewish joke, by the way. These two pieces of shit that you can't help but despise. Thank you. I hated every second of them in the screen. Aside from them, it was obvious to me that the show was taking its time, you know, introducing Jimmy, the lawyer who's forced to defend the indefendable. Yes, including these pieces of shit simply because he has no choice. Begging a weird looking hair receded nobody for a breathing room in every case. We were also introduced to Chuck the astronaut who never left planet Earth or his own private domicile and his relationship with Jimmy who often harasses him in his private domicile by forgetting to ground himself. We also get introduced to his rival Miles Edgeworth, a Hamilton, whatever forgot his name, his love interest, Kim Mommy, I mean my love interest and the sole reason I started paying more attention. All new characters, each one of them has his thing but for some reason I like this broken lot attendant. I don't know why but he looks like a pretty chill guy the kind of guy that wouldn't wait for the bomb to explode in his face mm. jokes aside i was really surprised to see someone as badass as mike work as a fucking parking lot agent i found it hilarious especially when he constantly clashed with jimmy for dama's tickets his job though makes sense for his age and his personality you know a former cop who now wants a quiet life but it also makes me wonder what changed his mind to think to risk it all again and i guess that's what the show does. It puts characters that we previously know in a place that makes us wonder why they are there and how they will get to point B. It didn't take me too long to notice that what I most anticipated in the show is seeing the characters that I already know. Since it's taking place in the same world as Breaking Bad, seeing Mike made me lighten up and I couldn't wait to see Gus again. We know how successful Jimmy becomes later and the kind of clients he's gonna take on and how that eventually led to his downfall. 
fault. But seeing him work from his tight office that's inside a saloon and how he barely makes a thousand off of any case, we wonder, what is it that he did that allowed him to change his life? The directing in the show made sure we paid attention to the little details and I noticed that Jimmy struggles to even go to his chair in his office. He has to move his desk to reach the convertible bed. He frequently checks for calls and hopes to get any messages. His desperation and his resolve can be felt as he tries his very best to maximize his chances. This along the good acting, we can easily feel his frustration. You know, his frustration as he kicks the bin whenever he comes back defeated. Speaking of the bin, I loved this particular scene. The cinematography is definitely an upgrade from Breaking Bad. Notice how Jimmy is standing in the dark while Kim is standing in the light. I don't know exactly what it should mean, but what I understood is that Jimmy is the corrupt one and Kim isn't. Or rather, Jimmy is drowning in darkness and Kim is the only good thing in his life. And what I loved more is the fact that she fixed the mess he made after him. I loved how they turned the simple concept of a bin into a beautiful demonstration of Jimmy's relationship with Kim. She cleans up after him, she looks after him and I absolutely love her. The way she smiles after the win he got and how she resonates with him, their chemistry is gold. Jimmy is great to see already, he's a great character and she completes him, something Walter White never had. Yeah, he had this bitch, remember her? It's almost the complete opposite, zero chemistry versus a lot of chemistry. This made me wonder though, we've never seen or heard of Kim in Breaking Bad, where the hell was she? I just hope she didn't die, I already don't want her to die, no spoilers please. I expected Jimmy to meet some bigger criminals who messed up, thus paving his way to knowing a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. And he started with these two sons of bitches, a bit disappointing. As the episode was about to end, to be frank, I didn't feel like I've seen something that truly hooked me yet. You know, nothing too crazy I would say. But, and out of nowhere, I see a gun in his head and a familiar face. <laughs> yeah, that's right, to go. And I immediately knew shit is about to break bad. That's all it took, just five seconds. That hook convinced me to continue. Going to the second episode, we see Jimmy, Tuco and his abuelita. As Jimmy sits eyes down like a biznatch trying to sweeten the part as much as the English language allows, knowing that a slip up could easily get him shot. Just a look at Tuco and you know that his eyes mean crazy and so he knows not to try his luck. We see Jimmy in the same awkward situation as Walter before. Him, Tuco and an elder. I don't know what is it with Tuco but he's always looking after old people. He's too nice for a guy who punches others to death. But then again, at least these two deserved it. If I were in Jimmy's place, I wouldn't defend them. <laughs> Jimmy's best quality is probably that he's good with his words and we see that demonstrated clearly as he's taken away. Despite being nervous, he saved his life and the lives of these two. Yeah, unfortunately. In fear of death and a killing guilt, this scene, in my opinion, was executed and written so damn well. It is easy to notice that in such a weird scenario, Jimmy is playing the lawyer defending those two scumbags and Tuco is the jury and as a writer I was impressed. He gets away but not for too long because after that Nacho sniffs for money the same way the US would go for oil. He comes at him to his office like I sense you have some nuclear head and I'm inviting myself into your land. This sorry excuse for an office I mean. Ignacio is nice even though he does not prefer for people to die. He is in the crime world for a reason. He would probably only kill if it's his ass on the line or for money. Here the million dollars mentioned once in the middle of multiple panicking sentences from a lawyer and it stuck to his brain like glue. He drooled so hard that he used a van with drops of blood on it and an easily trackable number as he was vetting the family. He's like your dog watching you eat that tasty food it's hard not to notice. So yeah he gets in trouble and Jimmy finds himself again in a position where he has to defend the indefendable like three dumb fucks who cut the head of a dead body and had sex with it. Now it's an almost clear kidnapping with one obvious suspect. Still he goes on to win this case by unkidnapping the family, his keen eyes saving his ass again. Something he shares with Walter White apparently. Next, if I'm not wrong, was the Chuck situation, which I find unique and kinda of funny. Just like every case feels like a unique intriguing situation that Jimmy has to deal with. And this formula works very well as they blend these cases into the main storyline. And in my opinion, it is what makes the show entertaining. I started liking the show. I thought it was definitely a good watch. But there are some things I didn't like. Like how the show felt much 
much more normal than Breaking Bad is or much more normal than any other series I would say. You know, less crazy shit happening, less explosions, less choking people to death, putting a body in a bathtub of acid. I don't see that element there yet. I'm only in episode 5 though, don't judge. And I understand. It could be a different show, you know. It doesn't have to be the same as the other one or any other show in that matter. One thing that I struggled with personally is the legal terms used frequently, which obviously makes sense for a show about a lawyer, but as someone who lives outside of the US, my vocabulary isn't as wide as an American and my knowledge of the laws isn't as rich as a citizen there. So every time Jimmy mentions a term, I'm forced to pause, translate it or google it or you know just to understand the context. I also didn't understand the dynamic of work between Jimmy Hamilton's firm and Chuck right away. It took me a while and I didn't understand the references that Jimmy used. You know referring to older movies, songs or maybe series. It just flies over my head and I honestly hate when they do that. But seeing that it doesn't happen that often it's not that big of a deal. The show is quiet and it's an experience that I want to continue to live and you guys are invited to live it again with me so long you subscribe you know i'll update you whenever i finish a season i didn't even finish the first season i just finished the first half and i was just excited to make a video well feel free to point out to something that i didn't notice or correct me if i understood something wrongly i'm gonna keep an open mind and assume it's a negotiating tactic now i'm gonna sit down because i have bad throat put a dollar in my pocket and make it official subscribe